Back in school, in arts class, I was often given the task of thinking about my weekend and drawing my experiences. I thought about and drew my recent visit to my aunt in Munich, where we were stuck in traffic for a total of three hours. So while I was drawing this, I was actually imagining that there has to be a better way to do this. And while daydreaming, I was imagining a flying car. I began to put my thoughts on the paper in front of me. I added wings and a jet engine to our car and a smile to my face. This idea made complete sense at that moment. After all, I never wanted to be stuck in a traffic jam again in my life. Fully immersed in my drawing, I did not notice that my teacher was standing behind me for a while. And suddenly he said, What's that? You've been in a flying car this weekend? That doesn't exist. Don't always draw such nonsense. Do you also remember an experience? A moment in your life you shared a very personal, meaningful idea and someone reacted in such a discouraging way? At that moment, my dream of a flying car was shattered and I was disappointed that what I thought was a really great idea did not at all appeal to my teacher. Many years later, as a creativity researcher, I reflected on this experience and I asked myself, why is it? Or where does this ability actually come from? The ability that we're able to imagine something we've never seen or experienced before. And the answer to this actually lies in our brain. Over the last two million of years, the volume of the brain has almost tripled. And the reason the brain has gotten so much bigger is because one structure of this organ has grown extremely, the prefrontal cortex. Well, what does a prefrontal cortex do? Just as airplane pilots practice in flight simulators, the prefrontal cortex helps us to simulate experiences we've never experienced before. And actually, no other living creature on Earth can do this to the same extent as us humans. And it is precisely this ability we also call imagination, which is the crucial ability for the development of our species. It is the starting point of anything new. It is the fuel to our creativity. From the wheel to electricity to modern technology such as the Internet, for everything we humans created, it has always been the imagination of one or more people that through the creative act has brought us the progress and prosperity we live in today. And the imagination is precisely this ability that enables us to not passively accept a traffic jam, but to come up with the idea of a flying car that we will most probably be all using in our daily lives soon. Developing this brain structure that gives us this wonderful ability of creating something new took two million years in evolution. Destroying this creative spark and hindering this ability took my arts teacher just two seconds. This made me think so I also asked, why is it that we hate the new so much that we more often than not are not able to resist to act like the teacher? And we're all guilty of it, myself included. And in fact, the rejection of the new, the unknown, the creative, is a kind of survival mechanism. Imagine a situation in which our ancestors suddenly come across an unknown tasty-looking fruit. Would you eat that fruit? Well, I guess most probably you would be pretty resistant to eating it because you know that the fruit could also be poisonous and you could get sick of it or you could even die from eating it. And that is exactly what we humans learn in time. Because in evolution, people with a strong caution or fear of the unknown outlived the people who didn't exhibit that behavior. So we can also say people without the fear of the unknown, the new, the creative, were basically taken out of the gene pool. Today, among many others, in business life, it's still the manager who exhibits this behavior. Only today, it's not the unknown, tasty-looking fruit, but the very new, unknown, creative idea the manager is confronted with. And of course, it's not a matter of life or death. However, research shows that when managers are confronted with 10 ideas and they have to decide which of the 10 ideas to develop further, they typically decide for the less creative ideas, ideas they basically know more about. 
And this effect is called the status quo bias, which means that we prefer the status quo to the new. We humans mostly prefer things to remain as they currently are. And one reason we prefer the familiar is because our brain creates more and more patterns throughout our life. And those patterns emerge from learned knowledge and experiences. And due to our limited processing power of our brain, we need this pattern thinking in order to be able to cope with the increasing amount of information we're confronted with. Now, this pattern thinking is also actually what enables us to make quick and smart decisions. So we exactly know in less than a second that we have to stop our car at a red light without even thinking. However, this mechanism is also responsible for why we reject the new, the unknown, the creative, and see a car as something that drives and cannot fly. And changing a pattern that first has been created in our mind is very, very difficult. But that is exactly what has to happen if you want to create something new with our creativity. And I would like you to experience this pattern thinking now. And for that reason, I have prepared a little experiment for you. And I hope it works. There are basically two sounds I'm going to play. The first sound is just a random forest bird sound. So let's see. So I'm going to play a second sound. Yeah? Here you should hear a phrase. Please listen carefully. Pattern thinking makes it really hard to be creative. OK, let me play it again. Pattern thinking makes it really hard to be creative. And now I'm going to play sound one again. And you should notice that your brain also works in patterns. Because pattern thinking makes it really hard to be creative. Pattern thinking makes it really hard to be creative. OK, let me play it again. So what should have happened, actually, is that now, even though at first you didn't hear any sound with the first bird sound, you should now hear the phrase, pattern thinking makes it really hard to be creative, loud and clear in your mind. Because what happens is, our brain combines those two sounds into one pattern, and now it's very hard to get rid of this meaning, even though you still hear the bird sound, you always have the sentence in your mind. And that is actually what has to happen if you want to be creative. We have to break out of those patterns sometimes. So let me see if we play, can play it again. Okay, I think it's really impressive. <laughs> Another reason we prefer the familiar is that actually the new can overwhelm us. When I started my new job a few months ago, I was very much trained at the end of the first few working days. And that surprised me, because my tasks in the beginning were quite simple. I basically got to know about my new activities, get to know about uh, my new colleagues, and I had, a, had a few conversations. In my old job, I worked the same amount of hours, but was not as drained in the evenings. And the reason for that is, my old job mostly contained routine work and familiar things, whereas my new job was 100% new to me and there was no routine at all. So we actually need more energy for one hour of creative work compared to one hour of routine work. Hmm. And the problem is, we're all lazy. You, I, everyone. We try to spend as little energy as possible to succeed and survive. And that is the reason we prefer the routine task over the creative one. But we don't create anything new if you fall back on the tried and tested. We need to break out of those patterns, even if it means expending more energy. And creativity is actually damn hard work. And as I hopefully showed to you today, the biggest enemy of creativity is ourselves. So let me put that into perspective. We know that we need our creativity, our creative abilities for the development of our, of our species, of our society, and in order to solve the pressing challenges of our time. Yet, we almost naturally struggle when we are confronted with a creative task. Real dilemma, isn't it? So how do we solve this dilemma? And I think the only way out of this dilemma is actually to actively fall in love with creativity. Because only when we are in love, we are able to accept flaws and persevere, even if it's sometimes challenging, and be willing to spend more energy on the creative task in the future. And I'm convinced that this will lead to a better world. Are you with me? OK. I'm sorry. It's not finished yet, <laughs> because I have three more insights from you, for you for why it is really worth falling in love with creativity. Number one is about joy. Have you ever built a billy shelf from Ikea at home? Yeah? How did that feel? Okay, sometimes at first you struggle, right? But in the end, you felt proud. 
And our body and mind rewards us for this creativeness with this wonderful feeling through the release of happiness hormones. And research also have found that we actually value a shelf that we built with our own hands more than a ready-built shelf. Or as Michael Norton from Harvard Business School would describe it, effort or labor leads to love. Well now, of course, you can say that building an IKEA shelf according to instructions is not a real creative act. And that is true. But if this rather simple act of building an IKEA shelf already creates pride, love, and appreciation, how much joy would only arise if we creatively design and build our very own shelf, probably out of old wine boxes? And some of you do that exactly for that reason. Number two is about health. For most of our lifetime, we work, besides sleeping and eating. And work is done because it has to be done. But the individual creative expression of the self remains scarce in a lot of jobs. And doing uncreative work, which is directed by others, gnaws at the human soul and might lead to high psychological stress, which in turn might lead to depression. And the World Health Organization already counted for more than 264 million people affected by depression worldwide in 2020. And depression is already a leading cause of work disability and a major burden on the global health system. And what do you think? Has the pandemic changed this trend? In fact, psychiatrists have been successfully using creativity therapies for a variety of mental disorders for decades. And even though the research in this field is still in its infancy and we're not able to just generalize those results, it can definitely be stated that creativity therapy has the potential to increase the well-being of those people and even promote a resistance to depression. And I'm not sure if creativity can really cure depression, but I strongly believe that it can help prevent increasing mental illnesses in the future. Number three is about meaning. When I was 29, almost exactly three years ago, I suddenly got pain, I went to the doctor, and I was diagnosed with cancer. I got the surgery, and luckily I'm fine today. But it was a shock, and I know I share this experience with a lot of people. After my surgery, I was facing death for 10 days. While I was waiting for the results as to how dangerous this cancer was, and whether it had already spread throughout my body. Those 10 days were the most terrifying days in my life. But at the same time, given this finite nature of life, it became pretty clear to me what gives meaning to my life and what doesn't. It was the moment in my life and I understood the great value of creativity for us and fell in love with it. Creating something on a small scale, like the IKEA shelf, or the shelf out of old wine boxes, can give us a good feeling, a certain pride. Creating something on a larger scale, with our creativity, can give us a sense of meaning in life. And I'm not able to provide any answer as to what the meaning of life might be for you. Everyone may and must decide that for themselves. What I can do, however, is to motivate you all to live a more creative life in order to find your very personal purpose. Now, it's your turn. How will you react to something new, an idea from someone else, after listening to this today? Imagine a situation. Your kid, a kid of someone else, or whoever it is, draws a flying car on the wall in your living room. How will you react? And I beg you, I beg you, please resist acting like the teacher. And don't condemn the new, but frame it in the most positive way you can think of. Let's fall in love with our creativity. Thank you very much.